Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing fine and ready for uh, day 15. So um, this is this is the 15th day we're going through this. And yesterday, something very, very, very special happened. And before I go ahead and start with my lecture today, um, yes, good morning. Hey, Vin Katasan. Hey, Roman. Hey, um, Jorg. Um, pleased to uh, have you guys on board. I love interacting with you every day. Um, so, so before I go ahead and get started officially with the lecture, uh, I want to um, go ahead. Let's. I want to show something that is special that happened. Uh, let me. All right, I'm trying to figure out how's the best way to show a screen and a screen. Okay, here we go. So uh, yesterday, um, so in 2018, I spent a year at uh, NASA Langley, and I'm still an affiliated scientist over there on their Isaac, which is the automated fiber placement um, system. And they just released yesterday on their YouTube channel a hour long um video where i take you through uh, the automated fiber placement safety uh, manufacturing this and there is like two snapshots where i talk with uh, jake Ture and don jiggly from langley on this and there is like some cool demonstrations um i don't know if the video plays uh nicely as i'm streaming it but this, this is something, something that I will be, um, that I've, I've already, already uploaded, uploaded to my, my um, to my, my uh, um, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn page. page. And this, and is, this something is something really, really, really awesome, awesome that you can, that you can um, thank you so thank much, you so for, much the for the claps and the likes and, the and, likes and, uh, and uh, good morning, good morning, uh, uh, Piyush, good morning, Elio, Elio, Fabrizio, Fabrizio, it's awesome, it's awesome. I was looking forward, I was looking forward for Sam to connect. Uh, uh, with you. Uh, with so you. this is a cool so link. This is a cool uh, we link. will come to uh, it. We will so come that's the first thing I wanted to share out. Um, um, the second thing that I wanted to share is um, on Friday, so in two days, we're going to have the first um, um, interaction with uh, someone that is uh, going to um, appear live with us from industry. So of course, we've had Alex several times. But Alex is a um, is one, one of our own. So Alex actually helped, helped me out with uh, setting up the slides and, and so on. But, but basically, on Friday we're going to have someone from Convergent, um, and they're going to talk to us about curing and about their solution and the software and whatnot. And this is fun stuff to be able to do. My platform is open for everyone, no exception no money involved, nothing. This is pure science, this is pure education, this is pure for fun. The only thing I ask people is, when you want to hire, come and ask me so that I can tell you about my awesome students and you can hire them. That's the only thing. So, um, so on Friday we're going to have one of those lectures and we're gearing up to have several lectures. I'm trying to uh, work with um, ACMA and I'm trying to work with Sampi on like getting some speakers. And that will be fine. All right, there is echo. Let me make sure I fix that. All right. No audio. All right, give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and fix that. All right, so I know what's the issue, and I think I have fixed it. Uh, this is a good thing about being live with everyone. Um, go ahead, um, go ahead, verify for me uh, with a message that there is no more echo and that it is good and that you guys are not uh, bothered with it and you can only hear me. In the meantime, I'm going to say hi to a couple of folks that just joined us. Uh, Wasim, Marty, Abdullah, Lara, Kartik, Nicholas. Nicholas is from my village in Lebanon. Hey, Nicholas. Um, and I hope I did not miss anyone. 
And okay, the sound is good. So let's go ahead and get going with our lecture. All right, awesome. So today's lecture is gonna be about thermoforming. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, one of these. So we talked about hand layout. Uh, we're going to, we talked about spray up. We talked about um, filament winding. And today we're gonna talk about thermoforming. Thermoforming is also known as hot press forming or compression molding. So it has different uh, techniques. It is in contrast to the other processes, which way they were open molding processes. It's a closed molding process. We're using heat uh, to, uh, to uh, manufacture, to shape the part. So as we're applying this compression and we're gonna see it in the video and it's a fast manufacturing process and it has much higher control over final part uh, dimensions. The advantages of thermoforming is that it produces high strength parts. It is capable of producing high strength parts. It has cycle times that are very, very small. Like, of course, it depends on the part and the complexity and all of these different elements, but uh, it has cycle times of less than a minute to seven, eight, nine minutes. It is suitable for complex parts. You can create with a hot press and with thermoforming, you can create um, complex parts and achieve high production rates uh, as needed. So let's go ahead and start talking about the material that is used in thermoforming. As you know, in composites, the material that you use most of the time is something that governs a little bit the manufacturing process. So we can have pre prec sheets or we can have so we can have SMC, so the sheet molding, where we're starting from a sheet and so on. Or we can have what we call BMC, bulk molding compounds. And as you can see on the slides in front of you, um, on the left, you have an example of uh, these pre prec fabrics. And on the right, you have an example of uh, bulk um, molding uh, compounds. Um, so we want to keep this interactive as much as possible. If you have any questions, throw it to me and I will try to as much as I can interactively to respond to them. So SMC, which stands for sheet molding, is long chopped fiber and resin that they are mixed to form a sheet. And uh, what we're trying to do right now is whenever we have a link for a YouTube movie that you can go and read more about, we're going to try to push it in the chat when it appears. Now for the bulk one, so for the BMC, it is slit it is chopped, it is short, and it is what we call UD. UD is, says the term UD stands for unidirectional, means it's going along the same, uh, along the same orientation. So let's go ahead and start with the first question that we have for today. Uh, which one of these is not an advantage of thermoforming? Do you think uh, A, fast process, have we discussed that thermoforming actually have a fast is a fast process we talked about short cycle times complex parts are not possible is that true can we not do um, um, complex parts with thermoforming final parts are not strong did we even talk about this about the strengths in final part and finally high production rate so which one of these is not an advantage of uh, thermoforming so let's go ahead and start going as you are trying to answer your questions, um, your, the answers. Uh, let's go ahead and start talking about this. Um, let's talk about fast process. You should definitely not select A. Uh, thermoforming is a fast process. Um, and thermoforming is a process where we are capable of actually um, producing parts within a few minutes. A, B, complex parts they are possible that's one of the advantages thermoforming we have uh, the advantage of actually the capacity of to produce complex parts and we can achieve half production rates so let's see a little bit with your answers elio ashok raman nick uh kartik venkatesan nicholas you all have got it right it is c the final parts are not strong this is definitely not uh, one of the advantages of thermoforming it is actually 
we can do fast processes, we can do complex parts and achieve high production rate. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the different types, the different process types of uh, thermoforming. So within thermoforming, when you have, if you have like this carbon fiber reinforced polymer that you are starting with, and the first thing that we do is, and is we do a heating stage. So you heat, the, the, you preheat your element. You don't heat it all the way till the end. You preheat it to reduce the viscosity so that you can enable the forming of it and you can enable it to actually uh, flow and take the initial shape of the mold that we have. Then we transfer it. And the second stage where we transfer it, and as you can see from this hot press forming of thermoplastic sheets that is taken from a publication in 2018 by Tatsuno, you can see what happens in here is you transfer it and then you close the mold. If you remember, we talked about this manufacturing process being a closed manufacturing mold. And then we apply the forming process. And then the forming process enables us to get the different stages that we have. So heating, we transfer, and we press form. Obviously, at the outset of that, you have to open back the mold and extract the part that you have. This is some examples, and you can see this from the YouTube link that Alex is throwing on the screen, is you have this heating process that, that is going on. You have this transfer process that the heated sheet of prepreg the thermoplastic, is uh, being moved into uh, the transfer zone, and then what's being pressed. Nicholas, this is an excellent question when we use BMC instead of SMC. It is really application and strength dependent. The more you use a sheet and you are maintaining this long... Okay, so what is composites about? Your manufacturing process, you want to av avoid uh, voids. And the second thing is you want to try to keep the fibers as long as possible. Of course, if this is what you want for your application. Let's say, let's suppose for a second, what you want is high strength. And um, you want the fibers to be the longest. Then a SMC process would be more prevalent than a BMC process. A BMC process increases the strengths, but however, they are chopped fibers, so they are not like the continuous and uh, the long fiber. And good morning, Apur. So, and there is another type and of uh, processes and thermoforming. So the first one we talked about is where we are heating the prepreg, the material itself. The second one, is where actually you heat the mold. So basically you take the mold and you heat the mold itself and there is no transfer region. You take the sheet inside and then as you're applying the press, the mold itself is, um, is heated. So this is basically the second process type. So this is an example of the second process type where we load the material and we load and we heat the molds and then we apply the press and we obtain this uh, element. Now, that's very, very important. Uh, we, got, we are gonna delve into the defects that come from manufacturing processes. And one of them is understanding of what we call fiber deviation. The process is simple. You have a fabric, you have a fabric, and you are pushing it and it has orientations and you're pushing it into some location that are more constrained, some location that they're gonna extend. So what you are going to have is uh, what you're going to have is a compression element. And if you can see in here, like you can see the picture uh, where you have the different orientation of the fiber that they, they get compressed on each other, but also you can have shearing due to this compression. So you can have elongation, you can have shearing, you can have other properties that you need to investigate and test and understand to better assess the influence of fiber deviation. When we talk composites manufacturing, most of the time, most of the time, okay, let me stop for a second and explain and illustrate this very, very important concept. When we talk composites manufacturing, one of the biggest problem is to manufacturing what was designed. The designer says, I want my angles to be 45 degrees. But then you go and you do a manufacturing process like thermoforming in here. And at some locations, you're, not, you're no longer going to have your 45 degrees on orientation or your zero or your 90. 
the manufacturing process is going to force a deviation of the angle from what was designed to what was manufactured. And this is what is very important to understand, especially in the cases of thermoforming and other elements. So let's go ahead and go about the second question for the day. Uh, is this, so we've been building up for this. We've been building up talking about costs. Uh, we talked about that for the three first processes, uh, the filament winding, the hand layup, and the spray up. And now we're gonna add this force dimension relevant to thermoforming. Since the capital and tool costing are high, the final part cost is also high. And the reason why this is very important for us to influence, to assess on is keep in mind something, mass production, mass production. You never, ever, ever buy equipment to produce a part. You buy substantial equipment, but in the end you're producing thousands of parts. So it's very important not to confuse the capital investment cost with the final part cost that gets absorbed, that absorbs the final cost and slash it down. So as you guys are going the uh, going for your answers, um, let's take a look into what you guys are thinking. And I guess you all know it by now. Yes, it is false. It is very important to know that um, the final part cost is not also high because we absorb this initial investment cost over the thousands of parts that we are actually uh, manufacturing. So for uh, the attributes, if you remember from ACMA, we have this table that we took from the ACME Basic Composite Study Guide, and we're adding to it every time we explain a new manufacturing process. So we talked about the finished part cost to be mid in the hand layup and spray up, although the capital cost is low. In thermoforming, the capital cost is high. And however, the finished part cost is low because we are producing thousands of this part. So in summary for today, um, composites uh, thermoforming is a fast process with very high production rates. It can be used for pre prep sheets or chopped fibers. It really depends. And I saw someone mentioning on the chat that uh, let me go ahead and go back to it, and I cannot find it anymore. Um, but someone mentioned that um, we have uh, we use mostly SMCs for uh, parts that we're going to be eventually machining and so on, like inserts and BMC for structural parts. But uh, this is um, I've lost access to my comments, so let me go ahead and reset that. And as this is resetting, all right. So material or mold can be heated. So we talked about two different types of processes. Uh, we talked about the process where you heat the material and you take it inside and the other process where you actually heat the mold. And although upfront costs are high, but the final part costs are low with enough throughput. So uh, this wraps up our lecture for the day. And um, all right, let me see some of the comments. Perfect, perfect, perfect are coming back. Economy of scale, uh, Dr. Abdullah, I totally agree with this. And um, uh, Imani, I use, you, hit it, you hit it where it matters most. You do not understand truly geometry and physics until you try to make something. And that is very important. Yes, Nicholas, that was what I was looking for. Um, uh, the SMC for machine parts and BMC for structural parts. Awesome. So with that, we wrap up today's lecture. Thank you so much for uh, listening to me. This is day 15. Let's give a cheer for all of us. Go ahead, clap, do whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and clap myself. Uh, we have done 15 days so far. Tomorrow we start the second 15 days of the course. Um, as we're moving on this week, we are finalizing composites manufacturing, and uh, eventually uh, we are moving to uh, design next week. Thank you so much for tuning in, and talk to you tomorrow.